Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is now re-engineering the Chess Classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are carrying on our look at the wonderful games of the great Italian player Sergio Mariotti, Italy's first Grandmaster who's attacking and gambit play earned him the nickname the Italian Fury. Oh, just grab a drink, got a bit of a sore throat. Um, this game uh, features one of uh, Mariotti's uh, favourite uh, openings against the uh, Sicilian. We've seen quite a few uh, interesting anti-Sicilians already, but Mariotti was also well known for playing the wing gambit. And um, yeah, I like the wing gambit very much. I've played it quite a bit in uh, in Blitz. And Mariotti plays it in a yeah specific manner that's really very, very interesting. So let's have a look how this game went. This is Mariotti against Holm in Budapest, uh, 1975. Uh, Seja Holm Pedersen was a, a, a Danish player. So after e4, c5, b4, black took on b4, and now um, a3 is quite uh, quite the normal move. Knight f3 sometimes played, um, but um, Mariotti just plays uh, d4. And after um, black's very natural move, uh, d5, just striking back in the centre, um, e takes d5 is what the uh, the engines are looking at actually always. Knight f6 and then a3, just try and make it a um, a proper gambit somehow. But um, um, Mariotti always played the very interesting e5 here, and uh, just uh, setting up the um, uh, the pawn centre like this and saying, okay, well, you know, I've um, um, I've given away a pawn, but um, this means that um, that my Pawn center, d4, e5, is now invulnerable to pawn attack. Okay, black can play f6 and attack the head of the pawn structure, but that's going to weaken, um, you know, uh, the kingside light squares as well. We're going to see a game like that uh, uh, later on in this series. Um, and then what, what is white going to do? White's just going to build up um, uh, French style, you know, uh, bishop on here and uh, who knows, knight f3 to g5 or f4 to f5, you know, all those sort of things, basically. And uh, actually, it's um, um, a type of uh, play that uh, was also um, uh, done a lot by um, an English player, English uh, amateur, about 2200. Uh, you might not know him, called Mike Surtees, who's um, famous for his revolutionary opening theory, but also played a lot of games with the wing gambit. And there's one famous game against uh, Yvanka Huska, English uh, uh, women's player, international master. Uh, where he won a very nice game doing just this. And, uh, well, I don't know whether he uh, he got it from Mariotti, but, uh, yeah, Mariotti is doing a lot of this as well. So e6 was played by black. Um, in actual fact, yeah, the engine's always very concrete. They they want to play uh, bishop f5, get that bishop outside the pawn chain before playing e6, minus 0 0.80, according to uh, to the engines. But, yeah, I mean, you know, white plays a3, white plays bishop d3, gets rid of that bishop, and uh, starts uh, trying to push the pawns. You know, there's there's always going to be danger somehow. Um, against an engine, when the engine's playing super concretely and exploiting every single uh, little inconvenience of your position, then uh, it's not going to be great. But against a human opponent, it's it's always possible somehow. And, uh, well, I mean, opponents will seem to be a little bit um, uh, worried about playing bishop f5. A lot of uh, Mariotti's opponents played uh, e6. So a3, and, uh, do you know, the engines uh, are assessing this position now as uh, 0.18. Um, so basically, they just feel that, uh, yeah, white's fine, this position. Pawn down, doesn't matter. Good centre, it's worth something. Um, yeah, I found that quite uh, quite amazing, actually. But uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it just, um, you do see in the, uh, in the French, the engines playing a lot of these sort of pawn sacrifices. Uh, there's some gorgeous ones in the Silicon Road to chess improvement. And there's a, a few on this, uh, on this channel as well. You know, just uh, giving away a pawn in the French just doesn't seem to be important. As long as you have this pawn on E5, that's um, cramping the um, the black position, taking away the f6 square from a black defensive piece, and thus you know opening up the king side for attack. That's uh, definitely worth a pawn. So queen c7 played by um, uh, by black, slightly uh, mysterious move, but you know black's uh, trying to uh, wait a little bit. You know um, uh, doesn't want to move this bishop first before you know white takes on b4. Black doesn't really want to take on a3 too early and uh, let the uh, the white pieces get active too early. 
And, um, well, you, I, I guess that Black was sort of thinking Winnower style here, that, um, you know, if this bishop moves from uh, from f8, then Black wants to have the move f5 to defend uh, the pawn on g7 against a queen g4 attack. Something like that, I guess. Um, so, uh, bishop d3, played by Mariotti. Um, knight c6 and knight e2. Not the engine's uh, uh, favourite manner of development. They were looking at uh, knight f3, which kind of makes sense. I mean, you know, if you've got the pawn on e5, then knight g5 is always, uh, you know, quite a dangerous way of playing. But yeah, I mean, knight e2 is, is perfectly, uh, perfectly decent here. Um, f6. Now, I found this a very risky reaction, but the engines uh, do actually like it. They think that's um, uh, a good idea. Um, and now f4 from Mariotti. I thought this, you know, this was quite uh, striking, quite uh, um, interesting to me. You know that um, you know Mariotti's just he's given up this um, uh, this uh, this b pawn, but he's not trying to uh, to attack very quickly. He's really just trying to exploit the fact that he's got a big center and play like that, and just forget basically that you're a pawn down. Pretty modern approach, I have to say. You know, and, and I think a very good one. So black played queen b6 now. Um, I mean, I think black was uh, yeah trying to be quite concrete, actually, and, uh, you know, stop white from castling, try and exploit the fact that, um, well, white's position is in a, I guess, you say, a little bit of disarray, uh, having sacrificed the pawn, this pawn stopping anything coming to c3. Um, you know, so black's putting pressure on d4, e5, and, uh, you know, and sort of saying, uh, OK, you know, uh, I'm going to stop you from castling. Uh, the problem is, is that, you know, um, with all these things is that, you know, why can always say, oh, well, I've sacrificed one pawn. Why not another? You know, and uh, you end up grabbing pawns and just uh, falling behind in development. Um, the engines were, were looking at, you know, moves like uh, bishop e7, for example, castles, knight h6. You know, let's just uh, get the, um, the king side developed uh, nice and solid and then uh, decide what to do later on the queen side. Um, but it was uh, it was sharp, but you know lots of draws basically between the engines in these positions, um, no wins. So you know basically it looks you know fairly uh, despite the pawn deficit, fairly you know fairly balanced. White's definitely got his uh, his compensations there for for whatever. So the queen b6 played, a takes b4, knight takes b4, so and castles. And uh, yeah, I found this again very very interesting. You know Mariotti and the engines absolutely agree. Um, you know, completely unconcerned about losing the bishop pair and giving up the light squared bishop. It feels, you know, ah, feels a bit funny, really, because, you know, you've got all your pawns on dark squares and, um, you know, losing the light squared bishop always feels rather, rather dodgy, you know. But um, but Mariotti's just seen it very clearly, right? I mean, um, if you, you know, if looking at this type of position, it's not quite what happened. It's quite similar, though. You know, what Mariotti's thinking about is, well, I've got two breaks, c4 and g4, to open this up. Doesn't really matter. I haven't got a light squared bishop. I can still do stuff on the light squares. And, of course, you know, the fact that this, uh, there's this dark squared bishop, you can go bishop a3, can swap off the dark squared bishops, leave black with a light squared bishop, and then start invading and, you know, trying to get into the squares. What I mean by saying this is that, um, you know, I sort of have this intuitive feeling of, oh, you know, losing my light squared bishop, the bishop around my um, my pawn chain is um, uh, is reducing my dynamism and activity. But the engines don't think that at all. And Mariotti saw it, you know, very, very well as well. Not at all. We've still got plenty of levers to make things happen. And uh, you're going to see they all got used in the game. So after f5, knight a3 was played by um, um, by Mariotti. I, I was actually quite tempted with bishop a3. It's Stockfish's favourite move as well. Stockfish thinks a slight advantage for, uh, for white. They just make sure that after, you know, knight d3, queen d3, we get the bishops off, and then afterwards we're going to try and come knight a3 into b5. That's quite, uh, you know, quite sensible. But knight a3 is a decent move too. Um, knight takes d3 played, um, queen takes d3, and knight e7. 
engines gradually getting a little bit more optimistic with uh, with white here you know sort of uh, 0 0.20 0 0.38 um not uh, you know so important for a human player but um but just going to show that um yeah that they consider that white's compensation in this position is um is pretty good and um you know if you look at the the type of moves type of positions that the engines were were playing here for example bishop d7 c4 just like Mariotti does in the game, knight e7, bishop d2, same sort of pressure against the queen side, and yeah, the engines are, um, um, you know, sort of the normal thing, taking the um, the uh, uh, decisive action to free their pieces. I mean, I found this very uh, very striking somehow. Just the engines uh, just willing to give up that b7 pawn in order to somehow get the the, the pieces active. You know, um, you see it so often now. The engines just never holding on to uh, a passive pawn basically, and then hoping to sit it out. Of course, they could do that better than we could ever do it. But they consider that against uh, you know a strong opponent, that's not the way to play. The way is give back material and free your pieces. Um, it's uh, it's always difficult as a human. Uh, um, I've, I've talked about this quite often uh, to decide those sort of things because it's always about proportionality. You think, am I being scaredy cat? You know, just giving back material and trying to uh, activate my pieces. You know, and uh, essentially trying to equalize in a way. Um, or should I be keeping my pawn and uh, just hanging in there tight? But um, yeah, you know, it's uh, more often than not with the engines, you sort of see all oh, the, uh, you know, the giving back material and activating your pieces. That's 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 the way to uh, to play it. And holding on to the pawn is just worse. And I think that, um, yeah, certainly in, in my brain, that hasn't, uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I was always uh, I was always very ready to, to sacrifice a pawn for um, for initiative and all that with uh, with white. But, um, yeah, I, I guess I, I think somehow in terms of giving back material, I was sometimes uh, too reluctant somehow. But um, anyway, knight e7 and then c4 from Mariotti. You can see he's playing just like, uh, you know, just like the uh, the engines like. Knight b5 coming in now. Um, of course, that's why the engines were playing, tending to play bishop d7 to stop this from happening. This is uh, slightly unpleasant. Um, the engines uh, again here wanting, uh, well, black played knight c6. The engines wanting d takes c4. Always, you know, um, if possible, looking to um, uh, to free some squares for their pieces, potentially get a bit more uh, activity there. And uh, yeah, would be a good idea. But still, the engine saying 0.29. I mean, why goes bishop a3, uh, rook b1, and we've just got very nice activity, right? I mean, the knight's coming into d6. We've got another knight who could do something. And there's d5 breaks to uh, to worry about. So, um, yeah, I mean, white was definitely on top from uh, from now on. Um, so knight c6 played and then um, takes takes bishop a3. And, uh, well, do you know what the evaluation here is now from the engines? 2.89. So we've moved from, um, you know, knights from uh, this position where the engines were saying d takes c4, you know, get some, um, uh, get the d5 square free, open that diagonal potentially and uh, go for that form of development. Um, well, after knight c6, which forces black to uh, accept these pawn weaknesses and bishop a3, the engines are saying absolutely winning for white. And I think that's why, you know, these systems can be so effective. And I think that gets underestimated. You know, uh, if you play these systems well, like Mariotti has, you know, just uh, not crazily or anything, but just uh, using his dynamism to, yeah, put pressure on, on the opponent with this move C4 and, uh, you know, force Black to make some choices about pawn structure. The game can change very, very quickly, you know, and um, much more quickly than in a in a, in a, a more boring uh, uh, opening. And um, yeah, well, this is what Mariotti has done. You know, 16 moves in, you know, almost plus three. You know, you wouldn't get that with a normal uh, necessarily with just, uh, you know, a normal uh, other quiet offbeat Sicilian. So very, very interesting. And um, yeah, but I mean, yeah, and really the basis of it is, uh, you know, Mario's. Uh, Mariotti's, uh, you know, sort of approach of playing quite restrained manner after sacrificing the pawn, just going for the space and the squares, basically, and, you know, the, the, the better development. So um, bishop e6 played, bishop d6. Um, yeah, I like these moves. Uh, yeah, bishop f8 also was played by the engines, uh, you know, not bad to uh, to force the king to move. But um, yeah, I always like moves like this where you don't exchange, you force the opponent to exchange on your terms. You know, and uh, sometimes it's moving a rook up a file when they're, they're being challenged to each other so that uh, if your opponent recaptures, you can improve your pawn structure. And here this is, uh, you know, putting the bishop on d6. If you take it, 
my knight gets into play with uh, with tempo. I would like these types of moves. King f7, and uh, well, I mentioned that we had a couple of levers. Mariotti isn't slow to do them. Uh, g4. I mean, you know, in some ways, this is this this turns out to be a, you know an absolutely massive smash, basically. But um, I do think that Mariotti's play here is really very instructive. You know, I mean, um, uh, the the opening concept, the build up. Um, the levers, um, the accepting uh, that Black's got the two bishops just because, uh, you know, you're, you're playing dynamically with the pieces that are on the board. Just think it's really impressive and uh, this would be a lovely, you know, lovely lesson for a young player, I think, uh, just to uh, um, just to see how this is being done and um, and and think about, you know, doing something in, in, in your own games. Certainly, I would have found, you know, this sort of game really instructive when I was uh, when I was young. Find it instructive even now, actually. I'm not so young. So um, G6, Knight G3. Oh, I think I've just left myself open to some comments from Mr. Beads there about my age. Um, so Knight G3, Queen D7, and now Rook B1. Um, not the engine's uh, number one move, but um, yeah, very nice. And do you know, I, I, I love this move, Rook B1, because um, um, it was one of the things about Alpha Zero. Uh, there's a, a fantastic game um, on the on the um, uh, on our Game Changer channel, um, also on uh, Chess24. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's um, I'm explaining a game called Exactly How to Attack, and uh, you know, in that game. Um, uh, Alpha Zero opens up the GNH files with um, with a couple of pawn sacrifices, and then you know moves the pieces back over to uh, to the center. Just abandons those open GNH files, but then comes back to them later. And it's that flexibility to keep on finding um, different um, angles of attack, and not just being fixed onto one thing. You know, I'm attacking there, so I've got to keep on attacking there. But say, yeah, I've got attacking possibilities from all the areas and then just be flexible enough to move and then move back. And um, I, I think this was something I was always a little bit guilty of. Um, that, um, uh, you know, I, I tended to sort of plant myself and then start keep on hitting in the same uh, in the same area all the time, you know, and, um, uh, and sometimes didn't quite see the whole board um, as I should have done. Um, I think that's partly, you know, um, um, uh, a nerves thing in actual fact there that I was uh, I was very uptight when I was playing chess and uh, never quite relaxed enough to be able to just, you know, <laughs> you know, you get stiff neck looking at the king side and you don't you don't you can't turn your neck to look at the queen side. And I think that was something that was very, uh, uh, very much a weakness of mine um, uh, when I was um, when I was professional. Strange enough, I felt I did that much better when I became came back as an amateur and uh, I was just more relaxed about playing at the board. Um, but um, but yeah, Mariotti showing some very nice, uh, very nice vision here. Just uh, moving uh, attacked on the king side. Got that pressure point. Now let's have a little a little focus on here and see what we can do. So b6 was played by black. I mean, the, the threat was to go bishop f8 and then knight d6 and then rook b7. So b6 played and now very nice move again. Again, I, I'd say, you know, super instructive for young players. This really is um, rook c1 simply. Um, You've created that weakness on the B file, but don't, you know, keep on looking at it. Don't keep on looking at that strength and point now. Go for the weakness that's been created, you know, and that's the C file. And, uh, you know, we saw this, we see, saw this type of thing against um, Gligorich, I feel. You know, that um, um, these little moves from from um, from uh, Mariotti, just putting, you know, just rook on a file, attacking a, a loose piece. Against Gligorich, he did this with the rook d1, attacking a knight on d5. hope you remember that from a previous video. And here, knight on c6 has been weakened, now rook c1. So rook g8 from black. I guess Holm was sort of thinking, well, maybe at some stage I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna get my king across. And also the idea is that if gf gf, well, we've got the pin basically, you know. So just trying to get ready for that. It's not easy to find moves for black. Rook c3, very nice from uh, Mariotti. Nothing wrong with that. Flexible there. Eh? The rook might come to here, or the rook might come to here, um, whichever you want. Also. Um, if um, a few pieces get uh, moved out of the way, the rook might also move to there. Just a very good, uh, very nice uh, uh, maneuver there. 
Rook c8, and now Mariotti, yeah, really went for it. And uh, not the engine top move, but, um, you know, when you play at the engine, so you're, oh, 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 very good. <laughs> you know, it's uh, uh, the engine's just looking at something simple, takes, takes, and Rook c1, and just uh, keep on uh, upping the pressure, and, uh, you know, Black won't be able to cope. I mean, that's the, uh, the basic idea. But Mariotti wouldn't be Mariotti if he wasn't going to play Rook takes c6 here. So obviously, uh, rook takes c6, rook a7. So queen c6, rook a7 check. And this is, yeah, obviously, you know, really, really strong here. Getting uh, to the seventh rank and uh, and hitting everything here. Um, King e8, knight c7 check is very unpleasant. It's the best, but uh, it's not making you happy. So um, uh, bishop d7 was played by uh, Holm. And now g takes f5. And uh, of course, if uh, g f5 now, then queen f5 check. So black gave a few little checks there. The kings are now on the um, on the same diagonal as the bishop, so it makes it a little bit harder to uh, to move. Maybe um, black played king e8 here to so just get out of the pin. Maybe leave that bishop sort of looking at, um, at the king. And uh, I mean there is stuff like you know rook c2 coming in. It's got to be a little bit careful. Um, knight c7 would pick up some material, but Mariotti just kept on going. Rook takes d7. Lovely. King takes and e6 check. Black played king d8 and f6. Look at that. Lovely pawns. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a, a fair number of threats uh, coming in here. So bishop d6 was played by home. Knight takes d6 and rook c2, counterattacking against the, uh, the king. e7 check, king c7. And now, um, well, I mean, there are some vague sort of threats. I'm not quite sure how serious they are. I don't think that, um, that we're particularly getting mated. But why not sh throw in a queen sacrifice? Queen takes, takes, and f7. And these two pawns are mighty. So, um, uh, yeah, um, I mean... You're threading f8, you're threading fg, you're threading e8. It's all too much, really. Black took on d6. F takes g8, king e7, queen takes d5. And here, black resigned. I loved this game. I really did like this game. I mean, it's, you know, obviously, I, and I've got a, quite a few more. You know, it's it's lovely to see Mariotti beating, you know, the, the very, very best players in the world. You know, that's, that's great. But, I th you know, I thought that this was also really impressive, just conceptually, you know, uh, just the, the conception of chess that, that Mariotti, you know, clearly had just, you know, naturally, instinctively, you know, uh, giving away the pawn, then setting up a strong center uh, as a basis for a future attack. No crazy, uh, no crazy stuff. No, um, you know, uh, throwing all the pieces forward, just uh, building it up. And, uh, you know, it's approved, it's engine approved nowadays. Eh? It's, um, uh, it's um, the engines just say, yeah, balanced, eh? um, uh, full compensation for the pawn, this strong center and the space, you know, and uh, it certainly was not the case, uh, um, you know, I'd say 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, all, the, all those periods in time, it certainly wasn't the case. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, carry on like this and also then, uh, you know, just not afraid of giving away the um, uh, the um, the two bishops. And then, you know, just really very feeling very nicely, you know, the power of the breaks, the levers that uh, that Mariotti had in the position. And then this, you know, this flexibility in moving over to the other side, looking at both sides of the board, the whole board in order to uh, in order to attack. You know, and uh, it's not, um, you know, Black didn't play very well. And, um, uh, you know, it's clear that Mariotti was the stronger player there. But I just thought that the, the way that uh, that he did things was was really impressive. You know, and uh, and uh, yeah, I, I found the finish really nice as well. There all these uh, sacrifices and, uh, you know, just, uh, yeah, I mean, a, a couple of exchange sacrifices and then a queen sacrifice to finish. That's not bad, right? So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, uh, a wing gambit. I've got another wing gambit to come, I think. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, hope you're enjoying the series. You know, I, I do like, um, you know, looking back at the uh, strong players. I think it's it's important, you know, um, in this, uh, you know, computer age. And, of course, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dead keen, uh, mad keen on uh, on engines and uh, and all of that. But I find it do find it equally important um, uh, to... Uh, um, not to forget how strong uh, the players were before. And um, uh, yeah, we see, 
incredible things that we would never have dreamt of, of course, with the uh, with the engines. But yeah, the the uh, the older players, so yeah, also uh, also knew what to do, you know, and uh, could play very very strongly. And it's it's quite good just to keep that uh, to keep that balance, I think, and uh, keep that understanding. And uh, it also makes you uh, you know just uh, a little bit more forgiving when uh, the best players in the world nowadays make mistakes uh, too. You know, I mean, uh, we see uh, we judge them straight away with the engines, but yeah, you know, you also uh, uh, you know, it's it's also good to understand that uh, that they're only human too, and that uh, yeah, this is what human what you know human chess without engine assistance looks like. Uh, and some of it is pretty brilliant, like this. So there we are. Hope you're enjoying the series. Do give a like and subscribe. Tell your friends, and otherwise keep tuned. I've got a few more Mariotti games to come.